Hey everyone, it's Dan and Phil here for Aussie Garage and today we're here to see Gino and Elio about their two Falcons. They've also got a lot more in their collection that we'll get to later on. But for today, let's see what's behind door number one. G'day everyone, Stan here from Aussie Garage. Today I'm here with Gino and we're here to talk to him about his 1972 XA Coupe. So Gino, mate, this is beautiful. Tell us a bit about it. How long have you had this one? Yeah, Dan, um, I bought this one back in 2017 yep. from New South Wales. A guy, I was advertising it on Gumtree and I, uh, I saw it. I've been chasing the coupe for a while and rang him up and said, um, can we do a deal? And he said, yeah, no worries. And we, you know, to him throat, settled on a price and then, um, yeah, got it shipped over to WA in 2017. Nice. There's nothing like having a coupe in the stable, is there? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, they're, uh, they're a good-looking shaped car, for sure. Yeah, no worries. And what kind of condition was it in when you got it? So pretty much as it was? Or? It was pretty, like, rust-wise, it was pretty good. Like, for a coupe, you know, they generally rust out pretty back, um, bad in the back end. Yep. But this car had very little rust, a little bit in the doors and that. But the guy that owned it before me sort of was halfway doing a GT tribute. So he had the GT bonnet with the scoops on it. Um, and you had the GT blackouts and things like that. So okay. when I bought it, I didn't really want that sort of look. I was tossing to go full GT or take it back to Fairmont, and I took it back to the uh, the GS Fairmont that it is. Yeah, nice. Well, I like that decision because um, GT replicas are everywhere. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, and being a Fairmont, it's a beautiful car anyway, isn't it? So. Oh yeah, it's virtually a GT really, without little bits and pieces. Like the interior is pretty much the same. And you know everything else looks the same other than the uh, the flutes in the front and the, the bonnet scoops. Was it this colour when you got it? Yeah, this is factory red pepper car from factory, uh, factory black interior, top loader, nine inch. It was born with a two fifty, but over the years, um, wasn't me, but one of the previous owners changed it and put a, uh, I believe it's a nineteen seventy six Fairmont three five one in it. So it sort of sits with the car, and I wanted a V eight anyway. So yeah, it's got running the three five one now, so no problem. We had a little bit of rust in, in the door, so we took that out, and that was virtually it. The, the car was pretty much rust-free for a coupe. Yeah, so, nice. Yeah, you nice. Know, most of them are pretty bad, so yeah, no, she's all original metal and that, so no problems. Yeah, no, awesome. So we know you're a Ford guy. Yeah. Um, you've got a few, apparently. A couple. Get, yeah, so <laughs> as the series goes on, we're going to look through a few more of your cars. No worries. But, so a coupe was a bucket list item for you, got, for you was it? Yeah, um, yeah, way back when I was 18, so that was at 14, 40 years ago, 14 years ago, yeah. 40 years ah, ago. <laughs> who's counting? <laughs> I had a, an XAGT sedan, yeah. and um, I met my, my wife, and obviously we got married and got a house, and the biggest asset I owned was the GT, and I sold that for $4,000. Mm. So I um, regretted that all through my years. And I said to my wife, when I turned 40, I said, I want to get another car. And I got reinterested in, um, in cars again. Um, my brother, who you're going to interview later, he kept his car from when he bought it in, back in 1983, so 41 years. Wow. And I regret not doing that. But since uh, what I was, I was 40, so 18 years ago, I've been slowly buying and selling and buying and selling and I've, I've got a couple in the stable now so yeah, i'm pretty nice. happy yeah nice so what so did that get you into the, your passion for cars in the beginning just from a young fella that sort of thing like what drew you into this world when, to dad, start with? when dad first moved over from Italy to australia um the first car he bought was a ford and that started the ford in the family my older brother um he's got fords he's got a half a dozen collector cars as well all fords my other brother Alia that you're interviewing he's got a couple of fords I've got Fords, my kids have got Fords, the whole family basically got Fords, so okay. yeah, so we just, uh, that's how I got into it and liked them ever since. Yeah, nice. Yeah, the 80s was a great time for, for muscle cars, wasn't oh, it? Yeah. You know, like for Fantastic. us young fellas watching what our older brothers were doing, thinking, wow, you yeah, know. Like, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so, no, yeah. that's awesome, mate, that's awesome. All right, Jenna, so just run us through quickly what we had to do with the body. You've mentioned it's the pepper red paint, which is the factory GS paint. Yep. It's got the Pro Stars on it, and mm -hmm. you said that they were on it when you bought when it. When I bought the car, yeah. So what else did you have to do, or what else did you do to, to get it to, to the way you liked it, to your spec? Okay, so when, when, as I said earlier, when it came, it was that half GT, half Fairmont sort of look, and I didn't really want to build a GT replica, as I said previously, so I wanted to take it back to the Fairmont. So I added the, uh, the twin grille, because when it came, it only had the, uh, the single light grille, so I put the twin grille on it. 
um, the bonnet had a GT bonnet on it with the scoops. So I took that off and I got the, uh, the shaker for it and we fitted the, the shaker. The chrome was as is. I fitted the overriders because they weren't on there um, and I put overriders on the back. I painted out the blackout, GT blackouts. The two revision mirrors were painted black as well also. So okay. we, we took them and, and painted them red and basically resprayed the car in its factory color added the uh, the shaker scoop and the uh, the twin grill and that was basically it. Yeah, and obviously back to the XA bonnet, the original XA yeah, bonnet. Yeah, back to the, the yeah. flat bonnet. Um, with adding the shaker, you know, some people like it, some people don't, but I didn't want to put it on with the GT um, scoops in it, so I went back to a, a naked bonnet and put the shaker scoop and it, it just lines up with the, the body line with the shaker surrounding that, so it, it's... It um, looks like it's meant to be really, doesn't it? Because yeah. the lines, like you say, run straight to it. Yeah. Well, speaking of of which let's um let's pop the bonnet no worries. and see what does the shaking okay no worries <laughs> and don't forget to check out our website and grab some merch guys so changed anything since you got it um basically all i've done was add the uh the shaker scoop it, it come with the holy 650 it's got a small cam in it and um, a set of extractors so basically how I how it came is, is, is what it is now all I've done is add the uh, the shaker scoop so yeah nice so got any plans to, to go that little bit further in here oh look there's, or? there's always um, room for improvement yeah, for sure so definitely. Um, you know it's not the best looking engine bay in the world but you know for me it's about the car looks good and it drives well so the engine's strong so yeah I'd, I'd love to tidy it up and hide a few things but yep. you know that's down the track for now but yeah for now i'll leave it as, as she is yeah. she's good to drive you know it, it, it pulls all right and uh yeah it's it sounds good and, and, and it looks good so yeah you know yeah, the engine bay could do a bit of tidying out but at this stage i'll um i'll leave it like this and then once i decide what i want to do then we'll start mucking around with the uh the inside all right so now just keeping it cool you got the big twin thermos on here yeah yeah fitted a yeah. set of uh, xf thermo fans to it so that that makes it run a lot cooler yep. they're notorious for uh for getting hot so yeah now with the thermos it runs really cool no problems so the engine the old engine fan just wasn't cutting it in the nah, end no nah, not not here in wa she no hot, we've, so. yeah well it's going to be another 36 of today <laughs> so yeah no and uh notice you got not the extractors there gilmer yep. drive so a couple of little things there yeah yeah now nah, the gilmer drive um was fitted to the car when i got it and i, I liked the sound of it when i heard the video when I bought the car and it was running, and I thought, yeah, that sounds all right. So I kept that on there, I like that. And then you had the extractors on. I've changed the exhaust, because when I first bought it over from New South Wales, it had a few exhaust leaks and going over the pits, uh, they didn't like it, so I had to put a new exhaust on it and that. So. Well, I can't wait to hear it um, when she fires up a bit later on. Yeah, no, hopefully she'll start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got more confidence yeah, in that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, well, um, well, let's go and check out the interior. Yeah, no worries. All right, very original looking in here. Yeah, no, nah, um, that's how she came from factory. So when the guy I bought it from, all he did in here was basically tidy it up. Yep. He redid the steering wheel back in about 2009, he told me. So that's been uh, refurbished and the, uh, the center pad. But other than that, and he changed the stereo and put a uh, stereo. I've got the original stereo at home in, in my garage. So, yep. um, so I've got that with the car. But Perfect. other than that, she is bog stock from factory yeah and you don't see a lot of the original steering wheels these no. days everyone changed it was the first thing you changed out as a young fella back in the day wasn't it yeah they weren't too appealing back then but no. now you're looking at 1500 plus dollars for yeah. one so yeah that's it yeah. so you haven't had much retrimmed in here either so it's the original covers from Regi back in the day as yep. well at the moment which yep. is amazing they're nice and soft still. yeah no it, the interior that's what what drew me to the car when when it was advertised the fact the little rust that it had and the interior you know according to him was original yeah so i thought you know, you don't get that very often. You know, there's a couple of little repairs up on the hood lining up there that you can see. Yep. But other than that, it's it's from day one. Well, that's a good indication that it still is the original hood lining. Correct. Otherwise, they would have replaced it. Yeah. So, yeah, well, it's certainly very clean in here. Yeah. No, it's, um, as I said, I was when I got it, I was pretty impressed with the condition of the car overall. So. Yeah, yeah. And the XA's had that classic wraparound style yeah, the old, dash, the didn't old, they? The old um, cockpit dash sort of thing yep. like you're flying an airplane yeah, yeah. Not, not the thing goes like an airplane but yeah. but yeah no, it's got all the gauges they're easy to see um yeah you know the clock still still works and this wasn't updated to a gt dash or anything no, no, like factory, that was it from the uh, factories of gs so the gs and the gt had the same dash okay so um and the other thing that i liked about it was a lot of guys when they restore their cars a lot of them don't know that the xb and the xa 
um, dashes are a little bit different. The gauges go the opposite way. So okay. in the XA, the needles come to the centre. Yep. In the XB, they all go to the left. All so right. this still got the proper XA gauges, not XB. A lot of people, when you see cars for sale, it's one of the first things I look at is the dash. And in an XA, some people got XB gauges. Yeah, wow. So, well, that's something that I didn't know. You're, yeah. We're always learning something. Yeah. You yeah. always do. I didn't know until yeah. one guy pointed it out to me. So I thought, wow, that's amazing. And I went home and checked mine. And yeah, yeah I've got the correct ones in mine. So. Yeah, it's definitely a, a stat for the, the purists, that it, one, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not that I worry too much about it, but I'm glad that it's got the correct gauges in it. So that tells me it's the original dash. Yeah, no, awesome, mate. So really, you haven't done, haven't had to do anything in here at all by the look of it. Just even, vacuumed it. Even the door trims are in great condition. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Yeah, that, when I got that, that um, the door lock on that side didn't work, so I fixed that, changed the door lock, and that's the only thing I've sort of done interior-wise, if you want to include the door lock as part of the interior. Other than that, I just cleaned it and give it a bit of armour all, and, and it is what it is. All right, well, um, let's go around and have a look at the back end. No worries. All right. Yep, sweet. Oh, we've got brand new t-shirt designs on the website. Go check them out. All right, so around here, first thing I've noticed is your fuel cap's in the wrong spot. It is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happened there? Um, one of the things that we did to the car was we shaved off the, uh, the fuel load on the uh, left-hand side and put it at the back and, and put it in like a Mustang so it yeah. comes through the back so I could keep the back quarter nice and smooth. Yeah, and it don't, looks great without, like, I mean, having that big panel that just that big fat yeah. bottom that these things have yeah, yeah so it's great yeah i mean i like the look of it but then i thought it's done a little bit of customization we moved it to the uh the boot area and, and put it in and, and yeah so that's yeah nice picked it up <laughs> yeah beautiful and inside the boot yeah open her up have a look so fairly factory standard in here factory standard you can see where the uh the old fuel nozzle used to come in yep and then we've uh, put the, uh, put the other one in at the back there so you so just patched into the original yeah, tank in original a different tank. spot basically yeah yeah, yeah. 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 so nice. all done that all works all good now you know the factory carpet and that and, and she is what she is she's a 52 year old girl but yeah yeah she's pretty good pretty clean no that's it mate and like you say there's nothing like the ass end of a coupe is there you oh. know like they're just they're so fat and you know they you can fit big rubber under there oh, and yeah. they, just, they just look awesome don't yeah they? They, they do they look really good so you know happy with the uh with the back i mean i think that is what makes a coupe look stand out and look really good so and yeah. i think it's running two six fives on the back and there's plenty of room i could probably go up to a, a 295 easily that's no it. Who, needs, who needs tubs eh? yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> no problems yeah, so, yeah no that's it perfect man it's All right, Elio. Now, you're Geno's brother. Yeah, I'm his older brother. Yep. So, and this is the second part of the shed that we've got in here. Um, it's a great setup, and we've got this beautiful beast here. Well, so, thanks for that. So, let's talk about your ride, mate. So, how did you get, come across this car? Well, we come across the car with a, back in oh, early 80s. A guy by the name of Dino Warfus in Belcata owned it. A good friend of ours, Paul, we used to go up and ride push bikes and all the crazy things you do when you were a young teenager. Yep. And Dino used to rock up in this. It originally had a black vinyl roof, the same colour, but it had uh, orange hot, hot wire wheels on it. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I said to him, I said, Dino, if you want to sell the car, can I buy it? And he said, if you're serious, I'll give you a first option on it. Well, in June of that, 83, he asked me if I wanted to buy it, and I said, oh, yeah, I did. So I purchased it for $4,600. Wow, and you've had it pretty much ever since? I've had it since, yeah. When you got it, what, did, what was the first couple of things that you had to do to the car? Nothing, well, nothing, nothing, nothing. The car was practically perfect. Perfect, oh. Would have been six months later, I lowered it a little bit. I put a set of extractors on it. But the car didn't need much, didn't need much at all. And it went through quite a few years later where we tried different sets of wheels on it. We ended up putting a 351 in it because it's a 302 GS Falcon, four speed. Nice. Then we put a top loader in it. Then we put a nine inch with disc rear end in it. And then it's just it snowballed from there. Yep. And the car was repainted in 1991 by Brett Magatelli. It was the last car he did in acrylic. We took the vinyl roof off and nice. made it look like it is. We painted up the bumpers, they're originally chrome. Yep. But what you see on the outside is all original. It's the panels are the same panels, uh, new back and front windscreens, but the re outside of it is as you see it. We haven't touched it. I like how you've done the color-coded bumpers on this because it, it makes a car pop. 
Yeah, well, the late, really se- late 78, early 79s, the GS has all come out with coloured coated bumpers and Brett says, why don't we paint your bumpers? And I said, well, should we? So we didn't. That's how she's finished off today with the Simmons wheels. As far as the colour of the car, what's the actual colour of this car? The colour's called Sweet Cream. It's an original Ford colour. Yep. And we haven't changed any of it. What you see is as it, Brett painted it. Yep. So, well, geez, that was painted back in end of 1991. So it's still still the same. It doesn't see much daylight. Yep. It doesn't definitely see no rain. And I try and keep it clean and running as well as I can. Do you know the background story of this car from when it was first produ- produced and bought? I, it was bought by a policeman, from what I know, in Northern. Okay. He had it for, I think, three or four years, and Dino Wolf has had it up till when I bought it. That's... I don't know where it was sold, I never really looked it up, but that's where, where Dino got it from was Northern. So you're the third owner I'm the of third owner, yep. and the last owner of it I'll be. Yep, definitely. It'll be with me forever, I reckon. What made this car special with you? It's the work that my elder brother Bruno and I have put into it. Always underneath it, changing this, changing that, tuning this, building one engine, changing this engine. You know, it's over its 40 year lifetime with me it's had five different engines at least seven sets of wheels three different gearboxes two different diffs but it's the time spent underneath talking and just learning how these things are put together how you take them apart why do you change them? why do you want to make things better one thing my older brother always said to me he goes it's no good just putting an engine in making it go fast how do you stop it yeah Everyone that these days, they, they go and buy a car and first thing they do is stick a cam in it, put a big car on it. That's what we used to do in the old days. How do you stop them? So you want to make it go, but you've got to make it stop. Definitely. This, this thing can do it. It's got, it's got hopper stoppers from Victoria on it. It's nice. It's got big, massive rotors. And believe it or not, it's got Toyota Land Cruiser uh, calipers on it. When you jump on it and you accelerate and you do want to pull it up, it actually will pull up. Yep. Pulls up quite good, actually. What the wheels that you got on here right now, Simmons, they suited. Yeah, Simmons FR17 three piece rim. They're all 17 by 8s all the way around. I've got two 45 width tyres at the front and two 75s on the rear. All right, well, um, we're heading on to the engine. Glad to. What have you done to the engine then? Well, the engine's, like I said, the original block from before. Yep. It's it's been completely machined by AAA Automotive, Bob Lush. It's got a 4MAB crank in it. All the main caps have all been machined and studded in. It's a 4V closed chambered heads. Heads have been done by Michael Marriott in Northern, the flow test of cylinder heads. Yep. It runs a Holly Strip Dominator manifold. The carb is a 9381 done by Greg Gower. It's a 850 with an 830 CFM centre and it flows 830 feet per second. Nice. It runs a full MSD electronic system on it. Pete Jackson straight cut gear drive because I didn't believe in double row timing chains, they stretch. Yep. And it runs a Gilmore drive because it sounds pretty good and it looks good when you pop the bonnet. You've also done some alterations in the, uh, as far as the alternator because that's not a standard bracket. No, they, they're billet brackets done by Road and Race Motorcycles by Michael because you want to do something different. Because you chrome the original brackets, believe it or not, it weakens them. And when you feed this thing, it tends to pull the, the bracket over and chuck the belt. So he's custom me up some nice brackets there you won't find anywhere else, unfortunately. There's a full fabricated aluminium sump that holds 10 litres of oil. Oil filter's been moved to the guard because it's a hell of a lot easier when you want to change it and try and get it down on an angle. Yeah, definitely. And it runs a Paul Wheel Racing four-core aluminium radiator that was brought in by Go Gear Racing, Racing Services for me. Perfect. And what's behind the engine? What behind the engine is... Uh, Trimic T, T5, yep. five-speed manual, with uh, Les Hines gear, uh, clutch system in the middle, because this thing, your standard uh, master cylinder won't depress the clutch. Yep. 
This thing's got a, a larger piston in it to depress the three-fingered clutch that's in it. Perfect. There's no... It, the clutches don't... It, there's no... You can't ride it. It's either in or out with yep. these type of systems. So everything has to be modified with it. So it's got a set of uh, four V extractors headers on it. So And I noticed that you've got a couple of signatures in here as well. And the signatures are very special, yeah. 2010 at Stanbridge Hobby Shop, Gino and I, we did a little, a small display. They asked us to bring some cars down because I got Alan Moffat over. Okay. And when he came out and saw the cars, oh, you cannot get a better person to come out and just look at the cars. He sat in them, he, he listened to them. We all offered to drive him back to the hotel. Each, okay. each going a certain distance, like one will take him one way, then, but Bianchi, because of their insurance policy, policy wouldn't let us do it. Yeah. But he wanted to, he wanted to go in the car, so we all had our cars autographed by him. Nice. And then 10 years prior to that, I had Dick Johnson sign this car. And I've got the photos on the wall here of him signing it and sitting in it. Yeah, perfect. Nah, this is wicked. And as uh, behind the gearbox, what have you got? You what? You run a nine inch? Or I run. You run a, I run a. I run a nine inch. That's set up to be like a Detroit locker. Okay. It's when you drive it, it she really hooks up, and you can see why they call them a Detroit locker. This thing doesn't unlock. It stays true to the fact that it's both wheels are turning. Yep. They are uncomfortable to drive, but you want to play with a little bit of horsepower. You've got to have everything there to back it. You can't just go yep. drop in an engine and think, oh, yeah, the gearbox is going to be all right. No, it's not. You've got to get something. Whatever you do at the front, you've got to back it all the way to the rear. Yep. And over the 40 years, yeah, everything on this car is there for it. There's nothing that Perfect. isn't there. The real, to make this thing tune, everything like that, any, any technical stuff, I take it to street scenes. Okay. John Donis, mate, the guy's a magician. He's just, he knows his stuff and he looks after it like it's his own. He's, he's looked after his car for now going on nearly 15 years. Perfect, yeah. If you, you, you take, you say to the car, we're going to see Johnny and the boys, you shake the keys and the car wants to go. <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Let's move on to the interior. All done in black velour with Ford embossing on the seats nice. in the middle. Now it's all it's all stitched to the original pattern. Malaga motor trimmers and Malaga, our cousin Brad, mm. he did all this. Nice. The dash, the dash. I wanted something different, completely different from what you see everywhere else. So had a dash fabricated up to look like a NASCAR, believe it or not. It's like the back seat doesn't even look like it's been sat in. No, it hasn't. Ever. <laughs> I think Gino was the last person to sit in it last year. Yep. In 10 years, he's the, last, he's the only person who sat in the back. Yep. And how long ago did you uh, restore all the interior? Two, 2000. Yep. Yeah, 2000. We got it back on the road driving with everything as, as you see it in here. Let's go have a look in the boot. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. I know that you still haven't finished it, but... I have got ambitions to panel, panel it all out, but I just unfortunately have run out of time with other hobbies and things that I do. I just don't get the time. All, all you'll see is roughly the, the, the spare tyre area. The rest will be all panelled out. I'll hide, I'll hide the fuel pump, the fuel filter, everything. No, no that will, this will work out perfect, mate. One day. Yeah. One day it'll happen. Hey, uh, all cars are a work in progress generally, mate. Yeah. So, I well, it's think been it's 40, as it is. It's been 40 years and still going, so. Yep. Be another couple yet. All right, mate, what time is it? Time to go for a cruise? Let's go.
Yeah, no, like I said, it's 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 nothing like that bloody thing, but yeah, just a nice cruiser. That's what I want. I wonder why you're going to keep this car until you die, mate. Absolutely stunning. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's my therapy. Yeah, yeah. Have a bad day at work, come home, sit in your car for five minutes, the madness goes away. Yep, that's it. Uh, mate, you gotta, you probably, you got to love having your brother involved in this sort of shenanigans with you, wouldn't you? No, oh, it's good. Like, obviously, Alio lives in Perth with me, so yeah. it's good that we can go on cruises together and that. And our older brother, who used to live in Perth, has recently moved to Albany. Okay. And he's got an XB GT, XB Coupe GS, and um, XA Fairmont, yep. and a 66 and a 68 Mustang GTA. So right, so he's got a few to, cars too, yeah. Yeah, we all used to go cruising together, but he's now down in Albany, so we don't get to see him much anymore. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's good having Alia around because we share a common interest. And, the rest of the world would take five minutes and look at what enjoyment these things create. Yep. You know, they say, make love, not wars. This becomes part of you. You sit in it, you know what it's doing, you listen to it, you listen to everything it does. Yep. Every sound that's coming from it. Jano Elio, thanks for having us here. Like we appreciate it, and we'll be back uh, next month with another part of your collection. Um, I think next time we're seeing a couple of Mustangs next time correct, round. Correct. Yep. So that can't wait to see that, and then we can move on to the rest of it. No worries. Well, thanks for having us and, and coming out and doing the car. Oh, thank appreciate you. it. Awesome, it's been, it's been awesome. awesome. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, it's definitely really awesome. Good. Thank no you very much. Thanks, You're very welcome. Can't it's been great. Again. Yeah, yeah no definitely. Worries.